Hi, I'm Pat Jones. I'd like to introduce you to the wave ride of the journey that we've been on since 1982. I was introduced firstly with Hydrofalls through a book that I read. I was so impressed and I thought with the problems that we have with these small boats, uh, with the ride that they have and also the performance in, in rough conditions offshore, I had to do something. Uh, being a boat builder I, by trade, I, I couldn't sit on my hands and see uh, an opportunity go missing. Okay, I'd just like to explain to you exactly what uh, happens with hydrofoils and how they produce lift, hydrodynamics, and how they're associated and built into the design of both the our captain boat collars and also the wave rider boats. So uh, I began my research and development uh, with a, a catamaran. Uh, with uh, what they call surface piercing foils where the foils actually come out from the side of the boat and go down below the water and as the boat goes down in the water more surface area on the foil produces lift so and that keeps the boat lifted out of the water they're okay in certain conditions and it's mainly uh, chop um, they're, they're fine they can overcome chop no problems but when you get offshore and you find that you've got an ocean swell and chop they have all sorts of problems. They went from the surface piercing foils, which were fine in, in the calmer waters, for want of a better word again, um, they went to what's called a submerged foil. So taking you on the journey that I went on, we've, we looked at the surface piercing foils. The first uh, hydrofoil shape, which was common in those days, was what's called a delta wing shape. So initially we had a delta wing shape, Hydrofoil had two legs like that coming out through the bottom of the boat. Now that delta wing shape there was actually starting from like a, a cross section through this section here was if you can imagine that a straight line through there so that when water or air travels from that point to that point uh, that way and the water or air traveling all the way down here the air gets to this point or water gets to this point here faster than what the water flowing over the top surface does and that creates lift because there's, there's that vacuum that's being created because that's there first before that. So lift is being created from that top surface. And of course, the, the greater that top surface um, and the shorter that distance there, the more lift is going to be created. And what I did was I had two, two legs to support that weight during, uh, through that area because it was going to carry the whole weight of the boat. So I had two legs going up through centerboard casings uh, built into the boat. And it was an aluminium flat bottom boat. Because I thought if I've got to um, have something which is going to be outstanding, I've got to have a boat um, that is performing offshore. If I just took a deep V boat offshore, everyone would say, yeah, sure, I've got one of those, and it already works fine. So I designed a flat bottom boat, and I thought if I can get a flat bottom boat performing offshore, it's got to, it's got to raise eyebrows. It's got to grab people's attention. But I found that in, with the tumbling motion of a wave like this, this is how a wave actually works. With that tumbling motion, with that foil coming into the back here, and because it spread across the wave, it was producing lift, and as it was coming through the front here, it was coming down. Now that poses the problem with um, what they call a sea crash. When the boat comes into the back here, it lifts the front, it lifts the foil, and then as it comes through here, it brings it down, so the, the boat crashes. So we, I had to think outside the square and uh, thinking outside the square, so you don't get this tumbling motion in, in air. So uh, the, um, the aerodynamics of a wing shape is fine. So I thought that if I fed a foil lengthwise coming in, by the time it comes through to this point here, it's getting downward motion while it's still getting upward motion there. So what I did was I made a hydrofoil lengthwise like that now to make a hydrofoil lengthwise it's got to produce lift very difficult to get 
an aerodynamic shape along there, so I thought hydrodynamics, you can't compress a liquid. So let's, let's create a, a hydrofoil so that it's that shape. And what happens? Water is trapped in underneath here and produces lift. When you increase the angle of attack. And so there's your hydrofoil there, an inverted V, water's coming in here, you tilt that back, water gets, and it produces lift. So you can regulate the amount of lift that you get uh, by increasing the angle of attack. Okay, so what we did was using that inverted V, uh, we had operating hydrofoils back in the 1980s. Hi, welcome aboard. And Pat Jones of the Sunshine Coast has come up with, with an idea which has an enormous amount of merit. Now, it's called an ultrafoil. There it is there. And it's designed to be a fully submerged foil and to control the bow of the boat as she comes over away. Now, we're going to put her in the water and I'll show you how she looks. Up until now, boat designers have concentrated on trying to handle what you can see. In other words, they, the, the waves are on the surface of the water, and that's what the boat designers have endeavoured to negate with their deep Vs in their cathedrals, etc. But Pat Jones went a little further than that. He reasoned that the waves don't go very deep, and if he could have a force acting on the boat which originated well below the surface of the water, the effect of the waves would be minimised. Now, it works astonishingly well, as you can see there. This is a barge. She's 22 feet long, or 7.2 metres. She has a beam of 8 feet, or 2.4 metres. She has two 60 horsepower mariners with which she does about 30 knots. Now, none of that is terribly remarkable, but the fact that she's a barge going fast offshore and yet is refusing under any circumstances to pound and has an extremely easy motion. You can see the easy way in which that bow is moving up and down certainly points up the fact that Pat Jones's submerged ultrafoil definitely works. Now, on the right of the boat was quite measurable. And the other thing we did was lift the foil all the way up and I opened the throttle and I was only able to leave it open for probably 20 seconds because the boat threatened to pound our teeth out. So it really was a graphic demonstration of how excellently that foil works. And she has this astonishing ability to go fast in choppy water and the choppier the better and to carry an extremely heavy load with moderate horsepower while she does it. Years later, we moved into the captain boat collars. And where you have a standard boat, a standard V-bottom boat, and here's your chine. It has a little chine bar in it, has a little keel bar on it. Now this is only this is only half of the boat to give you the idea. But we designed uh, the boat collar so that it sat on the chine like that. So there's the captain boat collar fitted to the side of a boat. And as you can see, looking at the inverted V, here we have an inverted V, they're producing lift. And this is why the captain boat collars work so well. So after that we'd uh, seen how the boat collars perform so well, in all points, following sea, punching into a sea, it doesn't matter, all points of travel, it converted a standard boat uh, to something dynamic. So what we've done now is we've moved from a standard boat, we're now producing the wave riders, and the wave riders, like a standard boat, comes up, has the wide reverse chime, wide reverse chime there, and the side of the boat goes up. So here's your hydrofoil again, producing lift in that area there. So here you see the wide reverse chine common on all the wave riders. Exactly the same as what the boat collar does. The wave rider has that designed into it. As I said before, you can't compress a liquid. So whatever water is trapped in underneath the hydrofoil, 
uh, is producing lift, and it's the same with the wide reverse chine. Whatever water is being trapped in that area there, and that goes either side, port and starboard, all the way to the transom, all the way to the bow. Now the bow area, very important having that hydrodynamic lift in that bow area so that in a following sea, if you're traveling and you're doing your 15, 20 knots and you go over a swell and down into that trough, and it can be steep and it can be you've been crossing a river mouth bar, when you come down into that trough, you're getting hydrodynamic lift right up to this very point here. And so as long as you've got speed on and you're producing lift in this area, uh, and again, it's because of the size of the chine, that's all being calculated, the size of the weights and everything, that it's producing lift. So it'll be very, very difficult for you to bury the nose of a wave rider, um, almost impossible. Uh, and of course, not only is it safe crossing river mouth bars, but while you're fishing, that reverse chine adds extra beam to the boat. So it has a similar beam as what a catamaran has. So you're going to get similar stability that you get out of a catamaran with the less expense. You've got a single engine, it's just a single hull. Uh, they might be a little bit more expensive than a standard single hull because all of a sudden you've got the extension of the, of the, the sides of the boat. So you're getting more boat. You're basically getting a hybrid half between a catamaran and half between a mono hull but you're getting the performance, um, better performance than a catamaran because you only need one engine.